I'm talking about things that I've never talked about before. Did your boyfriend upgrade your career? Do you take I can't believe it. I've had plastic surgery. You don't want to get married. Are you ready? Good morning, guys. Hope you're all doing well. We're having our first morning coffee. How's your croissant? Coffee is delicious. That's one thing that no other country can compare to Italy. Like the morning coffee, the brioche, right? Yep. Love it. Today, I have a particular video in mind, but today is also a crazy day because we are packing our home, which is going to be an interesting, interesting thing to do. So I'm gonna have this coffee and then I'm gonna fill you in right away. Okay, the morning coffee is done. We're heading to dry cleaning because that way we have less to pack. <laughs> now, because that way we can bring everything clean and ready to the new apartment. That's the goal, let's say. I hope it's open. Yep, all good. And uh, then we have to start packing. But I realized, so let me tell you, this video is going live tomorrow. And I actually haven't got anything to show you. I mean, like, what I need to be doing. I should be creating content, right, for tomorrow. But what I need to be doing is packing my life. All the shoes, all the clothes, all the stuff. We don't have that much in this apartment, but still, like, I have so much to pack. So that's gonna take me a very long time, which means that I just need to kind of, like, uh, film. I cannot really be vlogging everything because I need to be more efficient. And I wanted to film a video, obviously, so that you guys have a video tomorrow. And in all honesty, I decided to do a little like, kind of like a Q&A, but not Q&A. So when I get home, I am going to film a video where I respond to all the like things that you think about me. Sort of like assumptions, but not necessarily. More like what you've heard about me, what you think about me. And then I can respond to the ones that I feel like are repeating in a way. Some I'm sure are gonna be true. Bad or good, it doesn't matter. I think um, it should be quite fun. And I wanna do it a little bit differently than usually. So let's give it a go. My outfit of the day is something I've been wearing kind of yesterday and day before, but that's like moving lifestyle, okay? I had my nails done. I don't know if I've shown you. As always, at Ministry of Nails in Milan. Like, I love this. I kind of just decided maybe next time I'll have it in like white instead of blue, but I quite, quite, quite like this. So these are my off-white sunglasses. I will link them below. These glasses, every time I wear them, you guys ask me like, where are they from? Where are they from? Where are they from? So you will be able to find them linked below. So check them out. I got this jacket kind of like a boucle jacket from Marcella London it's one of my favorite brands this knit is the one with the feather sleeves from Valentino favorite favorite Margiela jeans Nikes and my Gucci Jackie that I love very much it's never boring in this house guys we just came home from the coffee <laughs> We're talking about all the packing and unpacking uh, we need no, to do. Tell, tell them what you're talking about. <laughs> tell them the truth. <laughs> it is about the unpacking. Yeah, yeah? yeah, but tell them the truth. The point is that I have uh, my mother, I think, hopefully, fingers crossed, and my sister coming to help us as we're moving in because, yeah, like, it's it's a process. Like, I just want somebody in the home as well as we're doing everything, but also, like, we're having, like, a super extensive, so many, like, security systems put in place that by the, while that's being done, I also want somebody at home so that I can travel and do my work as appropriate. And, um, yeah, we're just talking about, like, some unpacking and packing and the schedules and things. Honestly, the house is like a tip i don't even know where i'm gonna film this video because next to me these are like sort of shell like not shelves like racks rails really that you put in a box where you can hang the clothing so when we're actually moving i can move from a rail to the rail so i don't have to like fold things off hangers and then put it on hanger again i just put things on hangers in the box like that hung already and those things just go straight into the apartment where after you know we've done everything we can just place it immediately into the wardrobe now i'm gonna give you a little update on the apartment which i think i'll probably show you in the next video so if you're not subscribed to my channel you should subscribe if you want to see it all but today as of today the apartment is fully empty and we are moving in exactly eight days seven days seven days or eight days 
Okay, seven days. So, apartment's fully empty, not one piece of furniture in there, but hoping that in the next seven days we should have two beds, like one for our room, one for the guest room. We should have a sofa. The one thing that bothered me the most is the fact that the wardrobe is going to take a little bit longer to be produced because I'm having like all custom-made wardrobes for the wardrobe room. And in fact, it'll be like two months? Six weeks. Six weeks for the wardrobe to be done. So I was like, okay, I have so much clothes, all the clothes from Paris, all the clothes from here. I will not be able to live in boxes, especially because I have nine trip, nine trips ahead of me, I think from today planned so i cannot live from boxes it will be a nightmare it'd be really difficult to go through like men's fashion weeks can film festival and all of that stuff just from the boxes so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have like a temporary wardrobe like just like a temporary ikea one until our custom ones come in so you will see that probably in the meanwhile i have a lot of questions whether or not i'll be doing a wardrobe or house tours and stuff and i'm not so sure about that at all actually i will show you as much as i'm comfortable with but we'll see how it goes anyway so now i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna try and find a spot where there are no boxes no clothes no cables no bags yeah and actually do uh, what i wanted to do answer the assumptions and gossip kind of about me baby i asked my followers to give me some like assumptions that they have about me for me to answer like kind of like things that they heard about me or assumptions as it could be quite juicy video what do you think i think it will be super juicy what was your main assumption about me before you got to know me uh but i didn't know you before like well yeah before we <laughs> When you met me, okay, for the first time ever. Yeah. And then between the moment you met me and you got to know me, what did you think about me? I'll tell you what I thought about you. Yeah, shoot. Sure. Well, I was worried before I got to know you. I was very worried that you'll be very pretentious because I don't like pretentious guys. So on the first date, I went thinking, I just hope he doesn't brag. I don't like the guys who brag. Remember I told you that? And the fact that you know you, I don't know, like you went to Met Gala with all these celebrities, let's not name them, and all of these uh, things that you did in your life and the important people you were surrounded with. I was worried that you're going to come to the first date, like name dropping and being like this person who's like, oh yeah, I did this and I did that. And you were like super modest, which is completely what I not expected. I thought you were gonna be like snobby, you know? Mm, but I'm not. Uh... I know, not at all. Not even like 1%, but I wasn't sure because like seeing you, you're very like stylish and kind of like you, you when you come into the room like nobody can not notice you you're like charismatic and a little bit loud so i thought maybe you'll be snobby mm -hmm. that was my assumption about you which you broke but what was your assumption about me i don't know be honest be honest it's okay so i thought that you were one of those uh, you know i never really it, like influencers wasn't really my word you know i worked with them and you know very few are really how do you say liable but like what do you mean reliable reliable sorry in which sense no i don't know you know most of them they live on seedings and they is not really like uh, <laughs> they're not uh, maybe i'm sleeping on top of that but it's okay you mean like you meant that i was gonna be greedy and annoying basically exactly exactly but you are so like a loyal and so reliable you are not like a big 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 worker you know i thought you were just uh, what do you looking, mean a... looking for a free lunch you know what i mean what do you mean i'm not a big worker no you are i said i'm a big worker and um you mean like oh you, you are that... a proper businesswoman i didn't expect that okay. at all you know when i met you i, I just thought like uh, you're hot beautiful and i was thinking you know let's have some good time and then i found Lol. out that you were really like a super deep human being hard worker super loyal honestly the thing about you is your your, your loyalty like uh, you Think will do anything for friends family anything and that's mm -hmm. something that uh, when you someone look at you you know you're not like uh, you don't really look like uh, huh what <laughs> let's let's do the assumptions i think it'll be quite interesting for you to to see what people assume about me are you ready yeah before we start i wanted to show you something actually that i was thinking about 
in my bag. I got a new lip balm in the US as we were at the airport and it's like the new Chanel balm because I don't have enough lip balms, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you love that double C. Like, right? You love it's the healthy it. pink. Love Look how beautiful. Baby, would you like to give them some insights to your people? Oh, what kind of insight, baby? About, because about why Lady D never wore Chanel. I think they all know that, baby. Okay. Don't you think? If you know it, leave a comment below. I'm sure you guys and know. If they, if they don't? We will respond in the next video. Oh, that's how it works. Let's do it that way, huh? Wow. What do you think? Uh, so you're, you're the boss. Now, you, I think you will also be shocked when you hear some of these assumptions. I already screenshotted some of them at breakfast. There's so many. I want to answer so many. Do you think you're ready? To be honest, I was thinking to take a nap because I'm still jet <laughs> Well, you will not be able to not hear them because some of them are like quite out there. So first one goes. First, it starts off by saying, you and Xenia Adons are both amazing and I love watching your channels. But there was a rumor that you and Xenia are not real friends, but just for the camera. Lol. <laughs> This is like super not true. In fact, I think that we are actually only showing 10% of when we are together. I would say that probably like 9 out of 10 times that we hang out, we never even post about it or talk about it because we do a lot of like, I don't know, like Senia is one person that I would tell my secrets, like, you know, like big things that bother me or I would show my vulnerable side to. And I, it's actually like very funny because before we were friends, she once gave me a random feedback as a non friend like just a colleague from the industry she told me that i do not show my vulnerability enough and she told me like you know i think you're pretty amazing as a person but i think you don't show your vulnerability and you come across a little bit different than you actually are so i think you should look into this and she recommended me um renee brown and i remember being like what like what do you mean i do not show my vulnerability i'm like so sensitive and so like vulnerable most of the time but then i kind of like understood what she meant and i looked into it and now that we're friends it's so funny because i show her so much more of my vulnerability but to answer your question whether we're friends for camera or in real life i would say we're way more friends in real life than on camera it's just that sometimes we do a lot of things together for work like trips work trips fashion weeks coachellas like you know things like that so that it maybe can come across like that okay next question did your boyfriend upgrade your career with his connections yes what in which way Please, please enlighten me. How, how, what is, what is one thing that I got through your connections? Maybe that's rude. <laughs> Why is it rude? Just be no, okay, so like I, okay, let's be very honest, okay? Okay, so after a little conversation, I think, actually the answer is yes and no. No is like you do not give me access to brands. Like it's not like I work with like Prada, Valentino, no, no, you know, all of these brands no, no. because of your connections. You but say that whatever you do, wherever you But do, you introduce me to a lot more people, that's what I wanted to no, say. No, I mean in terms of work, but you everything you're doing is because of you. I didn't bring any jobs, you know, that's not my my job, by the way, to bring you jobs. My job is to love you. It's not even a job. Anyway. What you got with me, it's some connection of people. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you introduced me to some people, yeah, some like very important people that I would never meet because I, I don't ever speak to like CEOs of the company or CMOs of the company. Yeah. I speak to people who work in marketing, but thanks to you, I got to know like a lot of CEOs. Yeah, but you know, as I said, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say CEOs or marketing. I would just say that what I bring into your life is more people yeah that work in the also designers areas. like That's i met i met through you like i don't know if i should name but like designers yeah. at like gucci like glenn martins like i would never meet like these designers it's otherwise it's fine it's fine you know i know i know people you know and uh, and through me you met people yeah but one thing to say about me i think which is quite important to say is sometimes my boyfriend would be like hey shall i help you like with this and i'm always like no I don't like to ask people for help or I don't want you to call people to ask for things for me. I don't feel comfortable with that. No, you don't. Because I'm brought in a very, very different way. Like, I, I, which is probably wrong, but I was brought in a way that I should be doing my own stuff. Yeah, but I remember that to ask, it's a skill. I know. 
it's something that sometimes in life people need to ask. Yeah, there, there is like that. one really big thing that says if you need help, ask. And I never do. I should, but I'm gonna learn. That's one thing for me. Not assumption, but I was surprised on how incredibly lovely and humble you are. Correct. No, just kidding. No, it's true. You are. No, I don't know. Like, I just my main thing in life is to treat everybody the same no matter on what they do in life who they are how they are like where they are like my most important thing is to treat everybody the same and to give as much as i possibly can to help whoever i can help if i cannot help i cannot but that's about it that's my kind of role you do not tell people that you're from serbia because you're ashamed of it definitely not true like if you look at my blog on my about me section the first thing that says about me is that i'm from serbia pretty much everywhere like everybody knows that do i think that being from serbia helps me probably not because i've had like bad encounters with people who would say things to me like to my face about where am i from i if i'm being very honest and now i'm very honest like there's no filter in this video okay i cannot believe that i'm actually gonna say this i've had situations where like colleagues in like the western world said to like brands or to like partners like don't work with her she's like from serbia like you know we don't need like this kind of stuff so i think like being a some sort of like ethnic minority or like a foreigner in like the countries that i'm at is not a favorable thing but i'm very clear on where i'm from it's like the first thing that people learn about me my background and it's very <laughs> difficult to explain like sometimes the reason why i don't say straight away where i'm from because i find it quite confusing the fact that i was born in bosnia i have serbian and like a little bit croatian origins i also grew up in like northern part of serbia which is like i find it like personally like a little bit different than the rest of serbia like in terms of i don't know like i think like i'm from novi sad as many will know and it's just like a mix of cultures up there it's quite hard to explain like all of this yugoslavian background even you baby don't fully understand do you are you asleep baby of course i understand but people don't you know like if yeah. you ask in the us or in asia about uh, the history of yugoslavia they would they... They wouldn't know. So it's... But what I love a lot, and I've talked about this in a previous video, is that you love where I'm from and you love my country no, and you I... love to go. Like no, recently, you just asked me, only, when are we I going to it. Serbia? I... I support it. I love Serbia. I love Serbians. And I think that Belgrade is an amazing city. And I think that considering the history of your country, what you did, it's, it's, uh, it's insane. Okay, next assumption is that I've had plastic surgery and it's correct i've spoken about this this is not a secret there's like no need to assume this but wait i've had another assumption which said that i've had a lot of plastic surgery like a lot and that's not correct i've like on i only had like basically my nose now like well the, i found an assumption that says you had so much plastic surgery on your face that you changed your whole face this is not correct i started like blogging when i was 20 so between 20 and 33 you're naturally going to change so much right well i hope so i should hope that you're not gonna stay the same but i've had my nose done i've spoken about it I uh, had lip fillers which I've dissolved in December 2019 fully. I've never had permanent lip fillers as some would suggest or ask me about. I never had like, I don't know, anything kind of permanent done to my face. People say that I had like, I don't know, like jaw surgeries and things like that. I think that's just a bit extreme. <laughs> like, I mean, guys, I'm not like JLo. I'm a normal girl, relatively normal right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I had a nose job many years ago now. You can find it when on my YouTube channel. And for me, it was a great decision. I'm very happy with the results. I'm very happy that I've done that. I'm very comfortable with the way I look. I've spoken about, I know I have so many imperfections on my face that are natural. I know that my jaw is crooked. I know that when I speak, I speak crooked. I know that, I don't know, like my mouth is crooked. I know that like, I'm not symmetrical, that my eyebrows are different, that like, you know, there's a lot of that stuff, but it's stuff that I'm happy with and I wouldn't touch. If I if I wanted to adjust it, I could, probably easily, but it's not something that bothers me in any way, shape or form. So people find
find that strange, but I think it's okay that we look different and it's okay that if you want to change something on yourself, you change, but if you don't want to change something on yourself, you don't change just to fit the norms of society. I changed the appearance of my nose because I wanted to change it, not because I wanted the micro nose, which is not what I did. I've never done a micro nose on my face, as you can see. Equally so, there are things that I don't feel like I need to change. Uh, someone's saying, most of your designer things are gifted. I would say I get a lot of gifted items for sure from designers, but I would say 20% are gifts and 80% are things I buy. So what you see, you see 20% of gifts. The thing is with the gifts is I always choose them. So it's kind of like, I wouldn't call it a payment because this industry is very well regulated, at least I don't know how to say it, but at least where I'm at, like in the in the in the kind of level I work in, that gifts are not considered payments for any kind of publication. So we have disclaimers that we issue that because we receive so many gifts, right? I probably show five percent of the gift five percent of the gifts that I get given. The rest I do not show because perhaps I do not like it. And if I show something that's gifted, it's because I really, really love it. We have like I said this disclaimer which says that, you know, gifts are welcome but only if i choose it I, do, I don't like to receive like kind of unwanted gifts because i think it's not sustainable it's kind of like i don't have where to keep these things and also because i'm not gonna feature it and also we'd never guarantee features of gifts so it's just how it works to clarify a little bit very transparently reason for that is because as much as it's nice to receive gifts i don't really want them because i want to only show things that i like to my audience and i know it sounds very like i love my audience but i really do and i wouldn't be able to do what i'm doing in five years time if i'm just like showing everything that i receive i wouldn't be able to show you my personal style i wouldn't be able to present you who i really am if i'm just selling my soul for the gifts or the goods or the jobs and it becomes so obvious i don't know i just think you guys are way too smart for that that's my opinion maybe you have to hear this one out are you ready sure. i read one on the internet that you take i can't believe it what what can I say? I think this is probably like the most ridiculous assumption I've ever read in my life. And I really want to hear it like and meet this person who made this up. I don't know if it's the person who asked, probably not because she said she's read it. But I never even smoked one cigarette, like a normal cigarette in my life. Never tried any drug in my life. I never what even... What do you mean a normal cigarette? Like a, like a, you know, the cigarette. Tobacco. I've never even smoked a cigarette in my life. I never smoked weed, tried even, in my life. The only thing that I've ever tried of drugs in my life was when I was in Amsterdam, I took, I think, a quarter of a brownie. You know, the, yeah. the brownie. It had no effect on me. Like, I, I felt a bit relaxed, but it didn't do anything to me, I think. And honestly, I never, ever, ever tried anything in my life and to... I don't even drink. I mean, I drink so little. Like during the Coachella weekend, I had two glass, two drinks that I ordered and I didn't even finish either of them on like two different days. So my boyfriend doesn't drink at all. He never drank. He doesn't like the taste of alcohol. So, I mean, what can I tell you guys? We're a very, very boring couple. Yeah, we don't believe in drugs and alcohol. That's cheating. I don't think it's cheating. I think anybody can do whatever they want, but I'm a pharmacist. My parents are pharmacists. My sister is a pharmacist. I know the effects of drugs firsthand. I've seen, like, I had to dispense and give and supervise uh, people with addiction. And honestly, it's something that as a 33-year-old woman, I would want every teenager to go into a pharmacy for a week to see the effects of drugs on patients. And you will never want to... I never even took a sleeping tablet in my life because I've seen... The effects of course like it's because i didn't have to touch wood i understand when people have to take it and they suffer really badly for insomnia but here we're talking about hobby like hobby drugs you know and i guess also like whoever made up a story about me like misusing drugs doesn't really know the effects of the sale of, of drugs because you could not be able to deliver like two videos a week content every day 
working like 80 hours a week uh you wouldn't you just wouldn't be able to produce content to be responsible to stick to the deadlines to focus on so many different aspects of work to run a business to i don't think it's possible with addiction because you actually get in a spiral that gets very bad very fast very very quick so that's the truth Next assumption is you are very nervous about publicizing your relationship. We just love your happy. It's correct, if I'm very honest. I was very nervous about publicizing it because I wanted to, I wanted to show it earlier and I was speaking to Xenia about it as like my friend and she said, you know what? There are websites or like YouTube videos online revealing your relationship because they saw you here or they saw you there. I never like, I never hid who my boyfriend was. So many of you who ran into us on street, I was like, yeah, it's my boyfriend. You know, like many of, obviously all of my friends, the whole of industry already knew Filippo from like you know when i did the reveal it was so exciting for me to see how many of our friends who are influencers were messaging how much they love you that was like my i felt like you know what i'm so happy right now i was very happy like i, I never hit that but it did annoy me that other people are monetizing videos revealing my relationship when if i'm saying i don't want to reveal it it's i found it very rude that people were like making money of ads saying like i'm re gonna reveal her relationship it's like i'm saying i want to keep something private and you're saying hey let me show it to the world this is like really unethical and it's really wrong and whoever these people are i think they should be ashamed of themselves because if i say i want to keep something private to myself and my boyfriend is not a public person he does not want to be a public person why would you feel like you are so snazzy you don't show your face but you want to show a face of my boyfriend like it's really i personally found it very unethical and i was like I'm gonna stop this. You know, like that time when Sia, someone wanted to publish Sia's naked pictures and they were blackmailing her. And then she said, well, I'm gonna publish it now so you cannot blackmail me anymore. So that's kind of how I felt at one point. But the reason why I was nervous about publicizing my relationship is because I've only ever publicly went with one relationship, which was 10 years ago at the very, very beginning of my blogging career. I've shown you my boyfriend. I'm sure you can find it all over my blog it was 10 years ago we were very young more than 10 years ago i think it was 12 years ago and we we're very happy together but when we broke up we we're very young obviously when we broke up i was so heartbroken and on top of that i was getting millions of comments daily where is your boyfriend what happened we want to know the details and i couldn't speak about the details publicly because i felt very vulnerable heartbroken i was very upset i didn't have time to deal with it i was also hoping that maybe we will make up you know like all of these things that happen and after that happened to me i said you know what i'm never gonna show my boyfriend again because for like three or four years after I was getting asked when are you gonna say why you guys broke up and it was like a very personal situation so yeah and also like you know sometimes I don't talk about these reasons because it makes the other person look bad or not necessarily in this occasion not this other person but like some kind of circumstances in this person's life if it's like for example oh I just fell out of love or I didn't want to be with him anymore I would just say that because yeah maybe it would make me feel or look bad but at least I can say it because it is what it is but I don't feel like it's okay if I say the other person's side you know what I mean so that's it I was very nervous but I was extremely 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 pleased with incredible feedback that I received from you guys and wonderful words of support and how many of you are happy that I'm happy because honestly truly I am so happy and the right assumption right after me says you only showed your boyfriend for a business opportunity like I said for the past year I wanted to show my boyfriend online I'm gonna be very honest about this one I really wanted to show him online I was waiting for the right moment I was gonna do it maybe during vlogmas again on the flip side my boyfriend does have kind of like a serious not a serious job but like a nice job where I don't want him to seem like an influencer boyfriend because that's so far from what he is he has like a, a great job and is like you know doing his job so i didn't want him to seem like an influencer boyfriend so when this opportunity came up i was like you know what who wouldn't want to first of all do a boyfriend reveal with vogue magazine 
excuse me, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like if I could do a reveal of my partner with Vogue magazine and in paid partnership with my favorite watch brand that I wear every single day, what is wrong with that? Nothing. I wear this watch every single day. I love Vogue. I feel like, I feel like we're such, it, this is such a perfect opportunity to actually do a reveal, right? Someone saying you're not good at saving money. Actually, I think this is wrong. I am much better than you would think. I just am very particular what I spend my money on. So they're like, there's like, I would spend like 10,000 on something easily, like no questions asked like this, but then I would not spend 500 on something else that I think it's not worth it. Like you will never see me that I spend money on like clubs and partying, not even like I'm not someone who likes to invest their money in that because I think it's waste, but easily would spend I money on jewelry. I have a very juicy thing about this. Tell me. Something that I'm sure they don't know. I'm, I'm scared. So Tamara, she will spend 10k in... Uh, jewelry. In Chanel or yeah. in uh, Hermes, easy. Uh, she will never spend 15 euros in a Coca Zero in the hotel. That's so true. <laughs> yeah, because 15 euro for a Coca-Cola. I'm so sorry, it costs like one euro in the supermarket. Like once we were in the hotel and I was, you know, opening a Diet Coke. From the mini, from the bar. mini bar. And I got sued. Sued. For that. <laughs> I, mean, I uh, think like uh, for me this is like, a no. Just like yeah, okay, but like for me, Coke. yes, but for me, like something costs one euro if you just go downstairs to the restaurant or you, even when you order room service, sometimes it's cheaper. Mm. And like mini bar is just a rip off. Once there was like a bottle of water in mini bar for 30 euros. I was like, no, but yes, it's true. This is so true. It's so funny that you remember this example publicly shading me thank you so much but it's true it is what it is what is the update with your new house will you show your closet there after this and it's more like a question than an assumption and i think i've answered it just before can you talk about what happened with your brand so shady i don't think i've ever actually addressed this publicly and it's also a question not an assumption a long story short is that i was in a business 50 50 with like a team of people that were sort of like had their roles and we just didn't work together as well as I would have hoped for because I guess maybe everybody felt like they were doing more or whatever but it's just not my vision my vision of the brand was going a different way and their vision of the brand was going a different way so in the end we just couldn't agree on the how it was going and I would definitely want to do something on my own with nobody else because I realized that it's very very important for me to follow my own vision because all the designs were mine all the like creative part was mine and they were doing like the shipping the logistics the customer service and all the big background stuff and it was super successful i have to be very honest with you guys we were within the first week of launch at harvey nichols we had so many retailers asking us we were shooting covers with the product itself which is incredible but we just didn't agree in the in the business sense you rarely feel burnout because you love your job this is so true I rarely feel burnout. I'm so happy to do what I do. I love what I do. I'm extremely grateful that I can have this job. So that's it. You can be bossy, assumption. No, no, she is bossy. I just saw you nodding like this. I am very bossy, I think. However, I'm not very good at delegation. Like if I, on, with my team, I'm never like, throw out the trash, do that, bring me coffee. I'm never bossy like that. I'm always like, even like when I have like a new assistant, I'd be like, would you please mind going to get us a coffee and also get yourself whatever you want. I'm always like that, but I am very bossy because I think I know the best. You do, that's why you are successful. I think that you treat everybody with kindness and respect regardless their origin or social status. I agree. I yeah. think that social yeah. status doesn't mean anything like how wealthy or not wealthy someone is means nothing. I only treat people about like, depending on how they are as a person and they can be like the most important person in the world. But if they're like rude, I'm not gonna wanna talk to them. And my boyfriend knows that. I give everybody a chance, equal chance. And if people show to me, no matter who they are, how successful, how pretty, how, what social status, origin, skin color, religion, if they show to me that they are not nice, 
it's an immediate no. I'm very, very quick to be like no to this person and that's it. But if I like somebody, I am like on, like on their disposal nonstop. That's kind of how it is. Oh wow, the next one. I saw online that some people were writing that you lie and your boyfriend isn't real. I don't know if it means that you're a phantasma. <laughs> Phantasmino. Maybe having these people at another level. Right? I also heard a rumor that me and Filippo, or Filippo and me correctly, are not in relationship for real and it's just like lol. Like what can I say? I mean honestly... To be honest, uh, you should uh, go to the next. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Next. You eat no more than 1000 calories a day. LOL. Tamara, I mean, if you take her for a trip in Maldives for a week, you will spend less than take her to the restaurant. You're so mean. You eat everything and anything, but you're very good. What do you mean? I mean that you are, you are very strict on your rules. Yeah. So you never, you don't do junk food, you don't yeah. do alcohol, I don't do like don't McDonald's, do fat, but alcohol, your, I don't your drink. mouth is like, a, you can eat anything, which is a good thing. And I eat a lot. No, you don't eat a lot. Maybe like, eat remember in California every morning I was like granola and waffle and... No, but you eat everything. You know, you don't have like, I don't like this, I don't like that. You eat everything. Yeah. Thing. I'm not a big on meat. I don't really eat a lot of meat. No, no, meat not at all, but we don't eat meat. I mm. mean, I do eat chicken, I do eat fish, we don't do red meat, but just because we never really feel like it's not like yeah. because we are... Issues, yeah. You have problems with your fillers in your lips. I have dissolved my fillers in the lips in 2019 in December. My lips were much bigger. If I can find a picture, I'll insert it here, but... That's that. Never had, like I said, permanent fillers, so that's it. Okay, so next one is quite actually a good one. It says, why waste your time on negativity? Who cares what people think about you? Oh, Not your problem. Finally, well done. I agree with you 1000%. And honestly, in this household, under this roof, we do not waste time on negativity. Like you will never hear me say to my boyfriend, like, oh, I'm so bothered what this person said about me. Or like, oh, we never talk about these things. Never. And it's like, I would say, I mean, come on, baby. How do I wake up every morning? Like the best. <laughs> every La morning. The last five minutes. It's not But true. when you wake up, the best, best. I threw moves. something at you. Please don't sue me like uh, Amber Heard. <laughs> it was a Gucci thing. So it's okay, right? I'm very happy. I wake up every morning happy. I think in general, I'm extremely happy as a person. I think it's true you vouch if it's different i can get stressed easily if i'm overwhelmed with the work but just if like too many things come at the same time i do not waste time on negativity but i do think that this kind of video is kind of interesting and juicy a little bit right because you guys want to know the honest truth and i'm feeling very like spilling all the tea today so i'm spilling it all i'm talking about things that i've never talked about before are you ready next question is you have been in a complicated relationship before your boyfriend you're awesome it's true you're not actually complicated i guess when people say complicated relationship it means like oh we're together we're not together this kind of stuff no i was just in a relationship with a narcissistic and my boyfriend saying don't talk about this stuff don't talk about this stuff but it's true and i know that it will help some of the girls out there which is why i am gonna talk about this stuff and i think it's very important to talk about it because i'm very very against abusive, manipulative relationships i think the gaslighting can be so real if you don't know what it is google it now you should educate yourself when i have a daughter i will educate her on this very 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 much it's so important that people who just want to love give love and feel the beautiful side of being in a relationship can so easily be stuck with partners that just want to take advantage of them in so many different ways not to mention the manipulation the aggression the verbal abuse that i think like if any one of you right now watching this video is in relationship where you feel like you're in any way not being seen or are being abused verbally, not understood, are being held like in jealous cloud of possessiveness, now is the time to take this as your sign to seek help. 
help from the people who are close to you, go to them, speak to them and get like second opinion. Because when you're stuck in something, it's so easy to be stuck. And I often compare it to how to boil a frog. If you put a frog in a bowl, because people ask me, how did you let this happen to you, right? And I always compare it to how to boil a frog. If you put a frog in boiling water, it will jump out. If you now, if I now meet someone and they're mean to, mean to me, I will never give them time of the day. But if you meet someone and they're so nice to you, and then over time they become meaner and meaner and meaner, and then it gets like really escalates to a very bad level, Equally so if you put a frog in a cold water and then you keep heating and heating and heating until the water is boiled, the frog adjusts to the temperature. So eventually it will just get cooked. And it's the same thing as, same thing, same thing. Like, honestly, you do not even notice before something good becomes something bad if it's gradual. And it's so important to assess how happy you are. Another question is that you have erratic behavior due to drugs. Like I said, never tried drugs in my life. Uh, do I have erratic behavior? I'm not a hysteric person. I am very emotional, so I tend to cry easily, but it doesn't last very long. And also, um, I, like I said, even when we got robbed, I was not even crying. I don't suffer from hysteria. Like, I'm not hysteric as a person. I don't have these fights where I, like, throw things or, like, shout. I don't like shouting. We don't shout in this house. We don't, like, have any of those kind of things. Oh, no, I, again, I, I lost... I lost the count. Yeah, okay. Someone said that I would be your new essay in one cleave. Jose or Jose. Well, I don't know. Which one cleave do you work in? Let me know. But I have a very, very nice, um, extremely nice essay in one cleave in Milan. And I'm very happy with her. And she's so wonderful. So I wouldn't change it. People think you're a snob, but in reality, you're a total opposite. It's true. Do you think people think I'm a snob? You are. Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah. But it's okay, because you are luxury, you know, you wear beautiful things, you go to beautiful places, so it's normal, one plus one is two, but in real life you are the most humble person. I don't care about what people wear or what they do, this kind of stuff does not impress me, like at all all sometimes when people show up with all of the like like if i'm doing for example an interview for an assistant and people show up overly dressed for me it's not a it's not a plus it's not a minus no, either that wasn't the question, no? yeah but it's snobby someone who for example is snobby towards people that are like no different what I'm saying what they say is that you do look snob but you're not yeah like i'm saying i do not judge people by no, what they wear or who they are so but if someone doesn't know you they just see you standing there. You could look snob because you look uh, expensive, mm -hmm. but uh, you are so not. One thing that I know I'm not is a snob that no. I can guarantee, and that's it. Again, th there was a discussion that I'm paying a random guy to act like my boyfriend. Baby, please skip this. <laughs> Someone heard, read, that I'm superficial. Again, you could look superficial, but you are... You also... Know, if there is one thing that people understand after one minute they talk to you, it's your brain. You're super smart. Oh, and uh, they all know that. But when you see someone wearing expensive watch, expensive jewelry, expensive clothes, the last thing you think is that he's smart as well. But I do think that I can be sometimes like superficial to protect myself. Like for example, if we're in a situation that can be quite painful on so many levels for me because I'm too emotional. I like to break it down into very easy, simple things and kind of over... Like, again, like, I'm going to bring it to, like, you know... Baby, you're not superficial. Uh, oh, what we do, it's superficial. Because we, we are not... You know, we're not planning to find a way to go to the moon and we're not uh, curing cancer. So what we do is superficial. But as a person, you are the deepest. That's also what I mean. Like, you know, you would think that I'm superficial because I gave a job in pharmacy where you're basically like helping people, especially in, in like UK in the pharmacy, to do this job. So it could seem very superficial. And I kind of agree with that. But actually, I just followed my dream and I'm doing what I love and I'm making more money. So, and I'm having more experiences and I'm a business owner instead of working for someone. And you know, you do, you make some people happy. Yeah. You know? Next one is you began with fake bags I had. Not correct, but I do understand that when someone has 
a lot of bags, which I did not have at the beginning. I had like one Louis Vuitton bag, which was my first bag that I bought and I was wearing it all the time. So I kind of understand that and it's fine. You're very strict with yourself. I think so. I'm very strict with myself because when something bad happens, I usually tend to always blame myself. And you know that, like I always blame myself. So yeah. You get along very well with your mother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, you do. I, I, I got so lucky because I had the best parents-in-law, like literally the best. And I know that these things can be tough, but I think first of all, my mother-in-law cooks the best pasticcio in the world and she's so nice to me. Maybe she will get offended if you don't say gnocchi. <laughs> yeah, the gnocchi, but the pasticcio, baby. And? And the uh, pasticcio and tiramisu and yeah. the gnocchi and the grand gnocco, grand gnocco. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. A uh, good heart, but Pisces can be misunderstood. Oh my God, all the time, guys. I can get in so much trouble with people because they misunderstand me. Like I do not express myself apparently well, or like sometimes I can joke and people think I'm mean, but I'm just very direct. Like I'm to the point. I don't know why people believe you received insurance for all the stuff you lost in your robbery. I guess that makes them happy to believe, but that is not true, just to clarify. And do I wish I received money? No, I had a huge learning lesson. It was a very expensive lesson, but honestly, I do not dwell on this, like on material stuff. That's my rule number one in life. You shop without looking at prices, it's correct, but it's not because I have so much money, it's because I usually know how much these things cost. Like if I'm at MS looking at shoes, I know approximately how much they cost. How did you lose your baby cheeks? Your face is so skinny now. I think I still have my baby cheeks. No? I don't know. Your accent changed in the last six months, correct? I am, well, not fully yet. I'm still in my progress. I am having vocal coach, accent training. I'm learning how to speak more clearly, more like better in every possible shape and form and that's it. And I love my accent coach. I think he's amazing. I'm so happy to learn with him. He's very patient with me. That's very important to me. And if the new accent bothers you guys, it's your problem. <laughs> You don't want to get married, someone's saying. No, it's not that I don't want to get married at all. We're gonna get married, no? Huh? Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course we will, but of course we're gonna maybe get married, not but today. Yeah, we need to move today. So. We have a few things to do before. You're very shady. When you talk, you throw subtle jabs at people your viewers might not know. This is, you see, the Pisces, I get misunderstood. So, like I said before, uh, influencer boyfriends, and then my boyfriend was like, someone might get offended because they're gonna think you're talking about them, but I don't. Like, recently I, I told you guys in a YouTube video that I don't, didn't want to appear naked because it's not my thing on, at Coachella, and someone said, are you throwing shade at this person that was like naked? And I was like, no. No, like, you are. Like, literally 99% of people were naked. You think I'm throwing subtle sh jabs? What is it called? I think it's really no. And sometimes I feel really bad that you would think that I'm true. Because actually, someone that, then someone that tells me like, oh, this model was naked. And I'm like, wow, but she looked amazing. But it's just, just not my thing, you know? I don't judge people, but I have my own principles and choices of what I don't want to do. But I don't judge other people if they do it. Like for example, even like with wearing fakes, what we were talking about earlier, I personally do not support that. I think it's I, I just don't, it's not an industry I want to support, right? But if someone wants to do that, you do it. I don't care. I'm not going to judge you. Someone came recently to me and was like, how do you like my Chanel bag? I was like, yeah, it's great. Remember? And then she said to me like, oh, it's fake. And I said, you know what? She's like, I could never afford the real one, but I really want it. And I was like, none of my business. Like, you know, I, it's not something that bugs me. Please talk about your speech therapy. Like I just said, I love it. I think I need many more lessons because I need to learn how to speak better. One thing that you need to know about me is that I constantly try to improve myself. So I always try to learn new things. Like I want to learn how to speak better, how to be clear. I want to learn how to be a better CEO. Like I want to learn how to get better at like teamwork. I want to learn how to be better at so many different things and at investments. Any, is anybody asking about your Italian? No. Why? Come il mio italiano. 
Benissimo. You are a trust fund baby. It means that my money comes from my parents. Baby, that all the... a trust fund baby. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> so, do you want to answer the question? You come from... Uh, uh, if the trust is education, you do. I come from a family that is very educated, very, very hardworking. Yeah. And... I do not spend one penny of my parents' money for a very long time now. Guys, I need to finish this video because it's gonna last forever. And um, basically, I think we're actually at the end. Okay, almost. And we need to pack. As you can see, surroundings are insane, right? What are your financial investments like? This is very boring. I think like stocks, pension fund, you know, like all the kind of standard stuff. You never fight with your boyfriend. It's an assumption, baby, that we never fight. No, we do sometimes. Very rarely. Very and rarely. when we fight, it lasts for five minutes. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, you come and kiss me usually. <laughs> uh, but very, very, very rarely. I've heard you're an amazing person. I wish I had a friend like you. Thank you so much. Uh, that is it. Oh, one more. I heard that you're a very bad friend. Based on what? But people, we, we like to create the dramas. Yeah, well... Oh my God. No? Not interested. Would say something so well, let me just put it this way. I've had my best friend since I was a child. I mean, I would call her now to ask her what she thinks about how nice a friend. But we've been friends for the whole life. I have the very same friends, like on my 30th birthday, I had my friends from high school there, like some of the new friends as well. But I think what I pride myself with is that I don't, I keep kind of same friends. You will. My same best friend is my same best friend my whole life. So that clarifies it all. And I will leave you with that. And I will let you leave me go pack my life so I can go and change homes. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for asking the juicy questions. Thank you for assuming it's also okay. It's okay to have different opinions. It's okay to assume sometimes something. But remember, to assume is to make an ass of you and me. And we do not like assumptions in the pharmacy world. And I decided to take that into my fashion world because assumptions, they don't tend to bring a lot of great stuff, but it's okay to assume because it just shows creativity. What I think is not okay is to spread gossip and lies, especially if you do not know them for the clout. You know what I mean? Other than that, I just wanted to say that I love you all. It's okay to assume because, you know, we judge and that's okay. Um, we're only human after all. Love you all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.